Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here. Welcome back to another tutorial. This time we'll be channeling our inner Banksy and applying some graffiti to walls. But don't worry, there won't be any court mandated community service at the end of this guide. Instead, I'll be showing you how to apply the 2080 graffiti decals found free in November's edition of Wargames Illustrated. So first things first, we need our wall. Most likely you'll have a piece of scenery to apply this to, but for our purposes, I've created this very simple, if structurally unsound, wall out of plastic card. I've given it a suitable industrial look by painting it red and picking out some spots of rust. So this is the stage of painting that you're looking to apply your decals at. You'll have wanted to have completed your base coat, but not yet gone to town by applying your weathering yet. The reasoning behind this will become apparent later on. So once your wall has been painted, we next want to apply a coat of gloss varnish. You can apply this with a brush, an airbrush, or from an aerosol can, whatever you prefer. Now the reason we're doing this is twofold. First of all, the gloss will protect our painted surface when we start to apply the water and decal softeners later on. There is nothing worse than seeing your paint job slowly bubbling away after you spent a few hours working on it. Secondly, the gloss varnish will also give us a slightly smoother surface in which to apply our decals to. This will help to avoid the effect of ghosting, that transparent line you sometimes see around the decal, and will also help when adjusting the decal's position. Now that we have the surface prepped, it's now time to cut your chosen piece of graffiti from the sheet. Use a sharp knife to cut around the edge. You don't need to worry about cutting it out precisely, as with most transfer sheets at least, only the printed area will lift from the backing paper. With the decal cut out, we next want to rough it up a little, but to do this, we need a decal softener. Microsol is a mild solvent that will break down the decal's material slightly, making it softer. It is normally used to help transfers conform to a curved or uneven surface, but it also has great uses for weathering. By painting a little of it over the decal before using a slightly sharp tool to remove chunks of the paint, we can create the appearance that it's been applied for a while and has begun to be chipped away from the surface through exposure to the elements. After leaving your weather decal alone for a few minutes to allow the microsol to fully evaporate, take your graffiti and place it into some water. Distilled water is the best, but for the ecologically conscious among you could use any existing puddle. Leave the transfer to soak for around three to five minutes while you contemplate how we're living in an increasingly unstable and consumerist world that's slowly walking towards an inevitable Armageddon. But after this time, you should be able to move that transfer a little by poking it with a brush. Then dampen the area you wish to apply the transfer to with a wet brush before using a pair of tweezers to hold the decal and its paper in the desired location. Using a damp brush, carefully drag one of the transfers so that it just overhangs the paper. Press the overhang to your surface and then pull the paper away. The decal should remain in place. If you need to adjust the position of the transfer, you can use your brush to carefully move it around. By wetting the surface already, you will have made this task much easier. So be sure to thank your past self for doing this. Thanks past self. Once you're happy with the placement, leave this dry for a few minutes or if you're impatient, just blast it with a hairdryer to remove any water. We have our graffiti in place, but it doesn't quite have that painted on appearance yet. So bring back your microsol and brush some more of the solvent over the top of the decal. This should soften it and allow it to start to form around the bumps and dips of our surface. Leave it for a few seconds and then, taking a paper towel, begin to channel your inner Gen z -ness and dab away at your decal to remove the remaining solvent. What you should be left with is some graffiti that seems to be much more a part of the surface than it was before. So armed with this knowledge, go forth and continue to apply more decals to your piece of scenery. Overlaying graffiti in some places will also help to build upon this realism. Now that we have all the decals applied, we want to bring out our gloss varnish once again. Like before, this will not only protect the decals and ensure that they remain in place, but it will also create a smooth surface that will help with our next step. At the moment, it's all looking very clean, far too clean for the grubby and grimy environments that this kind of urban art is likely to appear in. So we need to apply some dirt of our own. Washes are a great choice for this. Applying various browns and black washes over your decals will not only help to further blend them into the surface you're painting, but will also help to complete that realism that we're striving for. The last step is to seal everything in and remove that glossy sheen created by the earlier varnishes. To do this, you'll need to grab yourself a matte varnish instead. After you've applied this layer, leave it to dry and you'll be ready to use your scenery in your games. 
And here we have the completed graffiti. Now, whilst this video focuses on just applying graffiti decals, the same techniques displayed here could be used on any water slide transfers, such as vehicle markings or unit insignia. As I mentioned before, you will find a decal sheet in the November edition of War Games Illustrated. So keep an eye out for that magazine in your news agents if you'd like to try out any of these techniques. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server, which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.